Yale University has agreed to settle a historic medical malpractice suit after one of its nurses is convicted of switching fentanyl for saline on women undergoing fertility treatments. The women say they were forced to go through egg retrievals without pain medication. Tonight we hear from one of the women in the case who tells our Teresa Priolo of her barbaric and gutting experience. They would scold me. They would say, you know, you if you keep moving, you're not going to have your family. You're not going to have a baby. You just, your back is against the wall, and you have to kind of do what you need to do to get through it. So I did that five times, and all five times were barbaric. Barbaric, torturous, inhumane. That's where Jamie Torello Jones' journey to motherhood begins. And she isn't alone. At least 93 women have shared similar experiences. I went to Yale REI to have all of these um, procedures done. And my main thing in my head was that I wasn't really thinking about the fertility portion of my life at that point. Jamie found Yale's Reproductive and Infertility Clinic, REI for short, in the midst of a breast cancer diagnosis. The clock was ticking, a tumor was growing, and she couldn't handle it until her long-term fertility was addressed. When you're a mom, you just, you know, you suck it up and you do what you need to do for your for your child, and that's what I did. Jamie arrived on the day of retrieval. The IV was inserted, but instead of receiving fentanyl for pain, she felt every last embryo being pulled from her body. It's almost as if you're made to feel like you're the problem. You know, you're asking, I was asking for more medicine. Um, I'm very uncomfortable. Can I please have some more medicine? And, you know, they would kind of look at me funny and, you know, you're maxed out, you, you can't have any more medicine legally, um, I'm not really sure why you're in so much pain. Her pain was because the fentanyl was being replaced by saline, siphoned out of vials by nurse Donna Monticone to fuel her drug addiction. She eventually pleaded guilty to tampering with a consumer product. Yale just settled with the woman for an undisclosed amount for failing to prevent and stop Monticone's conduct. This is a unique relationship that you have with your IVF clinic. I call it a trust fall because it is, you know, you're, you're, you are working with a clinic to um, have a baby. There's no other relationship like that. Joshua Koskoff and Kelly Fitzpatrick are partners at Koskoff, Koskoff and Beter. They spearheaded a historic medical malpractice settlement against Yale to correct what was done to the 93 women they represent. An amount wasn't disclosed, but it's said to be substantial. The university has also agreed to a total overhaul of their training, protocols, and processes. In a statement, they told Fox 5, quote, Patients come to us hoping to achieve this deeply important life milestone because we are a program leader with recognized reproductive specialists and outstanding outcomes. This mutual agreement allows both parties to move forward and begin healing. But is the settlement enough to act as a deterrent? I think that the, the public's knowledge of the case is a deterrent, and I think it all be, it's all because of the bravery of these women. Do you think that there's other Donnas out there? Yes, definitely. Yes. And it's that reality that haunts Donna's victims. What I went through was very traumatic, so um, I'm always double-checking everything, and I, I that's how I have to live my life now because this happened to me and I don't want it to happen to me again or my son or to anyone. Teresa Priolo, Fox 5 News. Separately from the victims, the uh, Yale University has also reached an agreement with the D Justice Department. They will pay $300,000 as for the nurse, Donna Monticone. We've reached out to her. She has not responded, but she has surrendered her nursing license. Because of her own child care situation, the judge has sentenced her to four weekends behind bars and three months of home confinement. She was facing up to a decade in federal prison. The acting head.